Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. We've got a slightly different kind of video for you all today. I filmed a damper upgrade that I did on the fork on my bike. Um, I felt that I had to make this video mainly because I myself couldn't find many, uh, you know, instructional or instructive videos of the process on YouTube. Uh, RockShox has their own materials, manuals, and a couple of videos on lower leg service and setup as well but nothing really specific to this process itself. Uh, the reason why I upgraded the damper, well, I have a Zep Select fork on this bike. It has a basic damper on it, uh, the Charger RC, which has only uh, low speed compression adjustment and a rebound adjustment knob. The damper or basically the fork never really felt, uh, felt right to me. It's always been really harsh on choppy terrain and from what I've read, the Zeb Ultimate, which uh, comes fitted with the Charger 3 RC2 damper, which is what I fitted in the bike, that is really good over choppy terrain. Uh, small bump compliance is excellent and it's uh, very supportive too. You know, it doesn't dive to the, through the travel like this thing's been doing basically because I've got it set up so loose to get uh, somewhat of a smooth ride out of it on the choppy terrain that I like, that I like to ride. So anyway, um, you know, I filmed the uh, steps of uh, disassembly and cleaning everything up and installing the uh, damper itself. Uh, you know, there's other, other things that are in the way like the front brake and such. Uh, you know, I guess most folks can figure out how to reinstall those themselves. But anyway, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's go through the process and, uh, you know, uh, disclaimer, by the way, this is not meant to be any sort of conclusive or authoritative account on how to do this job. It's just uh, just meant to be a guide. And if you end up messing your fork or end up hurting yourself in the process, uh, not responsible for it, <laughs> you know, like to put that out there. So anyway, uh, with that being said, let's get to it. I guess a rainy day is uh, probably the best time to do any bike maintenance. Right, so there it is, uh, set up in the shop stand. Uh, now basically, uh, just gotta undo this lid right here. And then we're gonna use that trader valve to let all the air out. Let's just do this, easiest way to do it. And then of course we gotta keep cycling this whole thing uh, to equalize the pressure between the negative air chamber and the positive. All right, so. I Cycle the fork up and down. So now that I have let all the air out of the fork, uh, I'm going to move around to this side and undo the bolt that's up here on the uh, adjustment knob on the damper. I've got a two and a half millimeter Allen wrench inserted in the bolt over here, and uh, undo the knob. And then we're going to go ahead and pick this up out of the way I don't think there's anything else in here that needs to come up awesome all right so now that we've got that taken care of I'm gonna flip the bike upside down and remove the wheel and then start undoing the bolts at the bottom of the fork to remove the lowers from the stanchions I was about to remove the wheel and then I realized one step I forgot to mention you have to get the brake caliper off the fork because it's on the lowers so I'm going to undo it from up here and I'm also going to undo this uh, small bracket over here to uh, free up the hose. I'm going to go ahead and uh, undo this bracket first and then we'll get the caliper off. It's a 2.5 millimeter hex bolt. We're going to use a 5 millimeter Allen key for the caliper. Now I'll get the next one. Next up, uh, we're going to remove this adjustment knob so it's held in place by a two and a half millimeter uh, hex worm screw over here. Shouldn't be very tight. Should be pretty easy to undo. Oh wow, this thing was already loose. Okay, let's pull this thing off. Hope nothing falls out. Nope. All right, there are two six millimeter bolts holding the lowers on in place. Uh, one on the, this is the damper side and then that's the spring side. So I'm gonna undo both of these and uh, not remove them completely. They need to be threaded in like two or three turns so that I can tap them with a mallet and get the 
uh, spring and the damper disengage from the lowers. It's pretty tight. Uh, okay, I may need both hands for this, so I'm going to put the camera down. Okay, so I've got uh, the bolts out now and it seems to be moving freely. I think I'm going to have to flip the bike over, drain the oil out. Okay, so I finally got the bike propped up uh, like that, pulled the lowers off. Um, yeah, a little bit of oil came out. I don't think it's uh, as much oil as you're supposed to have in there. And I've heard of this problem uh, with these rock shocks forks. I've read about, I read about it before too, that they don't come with enough oil already filled in there. As you can see, the old stuff was actually pretty dirty. And that's all from the spring side, by the way, the dirty stuff. What came out of the damper was actually pretty clean. Like uh, you can see over here on, on this side, it is pretty clean. Uh, next step is going to be to undo this fastener over here and just pull the damper out. I'm undoing this uh, top cap for the fork right now and this was a step that I wasn't able to show because I needed both hands for this. The bike's kind of precariously perched on this jack stand so I need both hands to uh, keep it steady while I undo it but uh, this is basically a cassette and top cap removal tool from a RockShox it's 10 bucks on Amazon. All right, so uh, after I took the damper out, I decided to go ahead and uh, clean up these lowers. I drained all the oil out of them. Then I got some suspension cleaner, which uh, sounds like a great idea, except that the can is actually worthless. Uh, it's uh, dribbling a lot down the side of the can. But as you can see, it does a good job of cleaning up the seals. I went ahead and pulled the O-rings, the foam rings out from those grooves in there uh, and cleaned them up as well and uh, just letting everything dry right now and once it's dry then i'm going to start reassembling it with the new damper here is the charger 3 rc2 damper that i'm going to be using uh, that yellow housing at the end of the damper is where the so-called buttercup uh, bushings sit and now i'm going to just take this thing out of its packaging it's uh, i just need to put an o-ring around the top cap area and then uh, put this thing into the stanchion over here. Here I have the Charger 3 damper and uh, here is the O-ring. I'm going to go ahead and install this. Alright, here we go. I've done it with a little more finesse but it's on there nicely. Let's go ahead and install it in the stanchion now. So this is going to be a little tricky because I haven't removed the handlebars or the fork from the bike and I've got a bunch of things in the way but I think I have enough space to actually uh, install this without removing any of this so let's uh, let's try to work this thing through all right try not to let it drag too much in on the insides of the stanchion I think we got it no, it's not, not too terribly bad. All right, yeah, all right. Got it in there. Just need to uh, thread it in place, uh, and I'm gonna need both hands for that because uh, I don't want to cross thread it. All right, so I'll come back once I'm done with that. All right, I used the top cap tool to uh, thread this thing in, um, and now I'm just gonna snug it down a little bit. But as far as the final torque is concerned, I'm going to do that once the bike is back on the ground. Alright folks, it's time to reassemble the fork with the new damper now. So uh, let's walk on over to my fancy workstation here. The lowers are nicely cleaned up and ready for uh, everything to be reinstalled. I've got my foam rings soaking in Maxima Plush Dynamic Suspension Lube. Uh, this is the lightweight oil that you're supposed to use for the manufacturer's specifications for this so they've got uh, the oil soaked up nicely now just give them a few squeezes and they've absorbed it um, you might notice that the foam rings do look a little bit soiled uh, and that's basically because of the dusty conditions i ride in i was not expecting them to look like this actually because you aren't supposed to really you don't need to change them this frequently I cleaned them out pretty good though, so I think I can get away with reusing them, but uh, I'd advise you know having a, a set of these on hand just in case yours turn out to be like this or any worse than this. Let me show you where these uh, 
foam rings actually sit in the lowers themselves. You see this groove between the oil seal at the top and uh, the, what do you call it, that tan colored bushing under it. So the foam rings basically get pressed into that groove over there. And their job is to keep everything lubricated while the fork cycles through its range of motion. So I'm going to need both hands to reinstall these things, obviously. So I'll show you what it looks like once that's done. So I've got my foam rings reinstalled on both sides. Now we're going to go ahead and grease up the seals before we start reassembling. So I'm using this uh, slick oleum light grease. Uh, this is supposed to be really good stuff. Uh, I've heard a lot of good things about it. You can use Stram butter, which is uh, really expensive stuff, basically like 17, 18 bucks for, for an ounce, or you can use this. This is available on Amazon too. And it gets, uh, it's actually better than the Stram stuff from what I've heard. So let's put a little bit inside those uh, seals on the lowers, and then we'll put the lowers back over there on the stanchions. We've got grease. Uh, in those seals as well uh, just a little bit not too much All right so now it's time to put these lowers back on and again I'm gonna need both hands for this probably but let's give it a go I'm gonna make sure I don't hit anything inside yeah, I'm gonna need both hands. So now I've got the bike flipped upside down uh, with the lowers installed. And the next step is to basically, um, let me zoom in a little bit over here. So you see, you can uh, see that buttercup bushing inside the hole. I've basically gotta pull the lowers off uh, enough so that there's a gap between the lowers and that bushing. And then I'll inject the oil uh, into both sides. So, uh, 30 milli uh, milliliters for the damper side over here and then uh, 15 for the spring side over here. I've put the oil in the lowers now so I'm gonna go ahead and start reinstalling the bolts. I've got a new crush washer installed on this bolt. The bolt came with the damper kit as well so did the crush washer and then it's just a matter of now uh, threading it in Yep, it's engaged the threads, that's uh, good enough for now, I guess. So that's fine, I'll go ahead and install the bolt for that side. I already have the crush washer on the bolt for the air spring side, there's no need to replace this one. Uh, you do that at the 200 hour service. And now let's go ahead and uh, get this thing situated or thread it back in this bolt hole. Right, so I have both this one and this one hand tight right now. I'll go ahead and snug them down with a with a wrench, but I'll do the final torquing down once everything is assembled. So let's get these things snug down with a five millimeter Allen wrench, not six like I said earlier. It's a five, and I'll make that correction in the in the video as well once I put this whole thing together for you guys to see. So I've got these snug down uh, and I verified that the, both the air spring shaft and the damper shaft are snugly pulled into the recess in the lowers where they're supposed to sit. Now I've got my torque wrench here and I'm going to tighten these bolts, both of them, to 60 inch pounds which is uh, 6.8 newton meters. So let's do this. Got it set. And I'm gonna brace the handlebars here with my foot. There we go. And this one too. All right. That's it. At this point, the damper and the lowers are basically installed. Uh, I've got those two bolts at the bottom tightened up and torqued uh, to spec. I'm gonna put the wheel back on first and then I'm going to flip the bike back over. Then we'll install the controls for the damper. Uh, and before we do that, we're going to make sure that the top caps are torqued to spec as well. So let's go ahead and flip this thing over. All right, so I've got the bike uh, up on its own wheels now. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, torque down these two top caps. So using the bigger torque wrench, but this one can be used for 
for these applications too. So these things need to be tightened to uh, 28 Newton meters each. So I'll go ahead and tighten them down. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and install the controls for the damper. So I'm gonna make sure that my low speed compression knob the or the low speed compression dial, uh, the RO1 is fully closed. We got that done. And then, uh, actually that's a high speed, sorry. That's a high speed compression dial. And then we're gonna go ahead and close the low speed compression dial as well with this two and a half millimeter uh, key and I think it's already yeah it is closed already excellent All right now we can go ahead install the detent plate over here so the first piece that we're gonna put on is this detent plate over here and you see that white mark on it that's gonna face back like this way so I'm gonna go ahead and set this down here and make sure uh, alright hold on I think it's keyed in place so, I'm going to make sure that it sits properly. Yeah, there we go. Now I'm going to install the knob for the high-speed compression adjuster. Uh, we're going to make sure that these two marks are lined up. This one by the plus sign and this one on the detent plate. And then we're going to use the two and a half millimeter Allen wrench to basically uh, tighten the set screw that's uh, right here on the other side of this. We're going to tighten this to 0.3 Newton meters. All right, next we're going to install the low speed compression knob and uh, the screw. But before we install the knob, we're going to flip it over and install this white ring back in the groove in here. All right, it's in place. And let's walk back over to the bike and uh, put this thing on. I've got the low speed compression adjuster. On here now and I put the I've installed it basically the screws in. I haven't talked it down yet you'll notice that this line next to the plus is lined up with this hash mark over here on the high speed compression adjuster that's how it's supposed to be and I'm now going to tighten this down to uh, five inch pounds which is basically 0.6 Newton meters the last step left now uh, with the fork before I start setting it up is to install the uh, rebound adjuster knob, uh, gone ahead and looped the part of it, uh, that uh, hex part of it slightly, that goes into the damper. Let's go ahead and fit this. That's it, it's torqued. And there you have it. That was the Charger 3 RC2 damper install in the Zeb Select fork. We've got butter cups now on the damper side, not on the spring side. I don't really care much for that. Uh, I'm not convinced that it's uh, everything that it's cracked up to be, but I guess we'll find out. In any case, I'm excited to uh, test and tune this damper and get this bike performing like it should hopefully it'll give me more confidence on the trails too I've got the sag set up for my weight and i'm pleased to say that i can actually run a higher pressure uh, in the spring now with it uh, still feeling the same off the top i really haven't ridden it yet but you know just what it feels like uh, my first initial impressions are that this uh, damper is a lot more compliant than the old one so that's it for this video then folks uh, if you like the video uh, go ahead and click the like button, share it with your friends, leave me a comment, and please subscribe to my channel. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you guys on a trail in my next video. Until then, peace.